Hello everyone. If you do not see the red live box right there, that means that you are watching the replay. Hashtag replay so I can say hello to you and welcome you. I am Melissa. I am of the Chalk Boutique and I am also a creator with Magnolia Design Company. So tonight I'm going to show you how to use some of our amazing products. I am just going to get my comments loaded real quick. So when you pop on, say hello. Let me know where you're from. If you're a newbie, hashtag newbie and tell me where you're from if you're catching the replay. I'd love to see where I'm spreading out to. Real quickly, I am just going to post my link for you guys. Hi, Connie. How are you? Your package should be on the way to you very soon. I mean, it should be there very soon. It's on the way. My mistake. Okay. So tonight what we're going to do is we're going to ink a patriotic shirt. So you see this shirt that I'm wearing here? I um, did this with the bleaching technique and then I inked this with our products. Um, so tonight we're going to do another one. And we're going to go ahead and get started. So what we're going to do is um, the Pledge of Allegiance. So we're making, we're going on vacation, obviously, for the 4th of July. So I've done, like, a whole series of shirts for the whole family. My daughter has one that says, Peace, Love, Fireworks. My husband has one. Well, this is for my husband. I'm sorry. My nephew has one that says, Freedom and Fireworks, and has the same fireworks as my daughter's. This one is mine. And so we are going to make one for my husband. I'm not quite sure yet how this is going to come out as we're, we're going to do a lighter color on a darker shirt, but we'll see. We'll see. So let's go ahead and get started. So the first thing I did was I put an ink mat inside my husband's shirt. So what this is, is it's like a super sticky mat. Um, we co they come in a couple, two different sizes. They come in this size, which is eight and a half by 11. And then they also come in, I believe it is um, 15 by 15. It's more for like a pillowcase or for an adult's larger shirt. Um, so this is good for like the kiddo's shirt or if you just want to do a small design. But I decided to go with the bigger one today. So what these are, are it's actually like really, really sticky. So not only does it act like a barrier in between your two layers of your shirt so your ink doesn't go through, but you can see how nice and tight I don't know if tight's the right word. How nice and um, no wrinkles there are here. Like, it's not going to move at all. It's nice and tightly on there. So, yeah, tight is a good word. Hi, Brenda. How are you, girl? Welcome, you guys. If you're just hopping on, say hello. Let me know you're here. Hi, Terry. So, we put our shirt on an ink mat. We, I, I put the shirt on an ink mat. Um, now, So, now it's not going to move while I'm inking. It's going to make sure that I have a solid... Um, surface to work with and then hi joy how are you welcome guys um, and it's gonna make it so that when I ink on the front it doesn't go through to the back so let's go ahead and get started so our stencils are amazing you guys these are um, silk screen and they are actually reusable 10 to 15 times hi Stephanie welcome hashtag newbie if you're new guys and please tell me where you're watching from I'd love to see where we are reaching hi tracy so this is the stencil we're using tonight so we're using the pledge of allegiance um so this is the one he really really wanted so as soon as he saw that the stencil was coming out he had to do it welcome from alabama hi shannon so i'm going to show you the silk screen anything that you see here that looks white or well now it looks see-through now because it's not on the thing that is actually like a fine mesh netting silk screen. So what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to have a lot of really nice fine details that you wouldn't get with your typical open stencil. Um, and there's no weeding involved. There's no SVGs involved, nothing. You just lay it down and you, it's ready to go. And then you can wash it and reuse it over and over again with other mediums. So you can use it with chalk paste. You can use it with ink. You can use it with um, etching cream. I did one with burn cream yesterday. We burned the, um, my God, the Declaration of Independence. Welcome, Stephanie from Pennsylvania. Okay, so here we go. So we're going to go ahead and get started. So as you can see, this is super, super sticky. The reason why it's so sticky is 
because we use these on everything. So they have to be super sticky so that you um, have those nice clean lines. So what we're gonna do is, I told you guys this is already on the ink mat. So we're just gonna lay down our stencil. This is a larger shirt, I have it folded in half. Uh, so I'm gonna do it a little bit lower before I do that, actually, I just wanted to show you guys, I folded this over just to make it easier, but the way I can tell where the center of the shirt is, I lined it up where the um, tag is on the shirt. I don't know if that's on camera. Let me pull this back a little bit. So you can see where the tag was on the shirt. Um, and since that's extra space, I just folded the shirt over. But that piece of tape there is how I can tell where my middle is. So that way I don't have to measure because usually I just eyeball it. So now we're gonna go ahead and lay this down. If you are hopping on, say hey. Tell me where you're watching from. So we're just gonna lay this down and you'll notice I have no wrinkles in the area that I wanna use. So another trick to finding the center of your stencil is just to fold it, make sure it's um, sticky side out. And you can do like a little crease just to see where the center is. And that little crease will go away when you're washing it and putting it back on your um, backer sheet. So we're going to go ahead and lay this down a few, I don't know how far down to do it. Uh, I'd say like five inches down. Hopefully that's good. I don't know. And what we're going to do is we're going to press down hard because we want to make sure that we have no air bubbles because if we have air bubbles, then we're going to have bleeding and we don't want that. So you want to make sure you have no air bubbles. I have a little trick that I do to get rid of the air bubbles on harder surfaces, but for fabrics, I usually just do it with my fingers. So now we're gonna go ahead and grab our ink. We're gonna start with our bright white ink, and our inks are permanent once heat set. And I'm gonna tell you, even if it's not heat set, it's gonna be on there for a while, unless you like immediately get it off. So you wanna make sure you're prepared <laughs> if you make any mistakes, or I like to have a wipeout just to clean my hands as I'm going. Um, you want to do your absolute best to stay on your surface. So we're going to use this white ink. What's cool about the ink is it basically becomes part of the shirt. It's not going to fade unless like your shirt is so old that that's fading too. It's not going to peel like um, your vinyl would. So here's what our ink looks like. It's just going to be like a paste almost, but it's a little bit thinner. All you're going to do, you guys, this is so easy. We're gonna take a little bit of ink, put it on our squeegee, and I'm just gonna spread the ink across my stencil over those silk screen areas. When I'm doing a shirt, I tend to put a tiny little bit of pressure, but not too, too much, because if you do put too much pressure, you will have bleeding. Um, and I haven't decided yet if I'm going to just leave this white or if I'm gonna do shadowing, because it's a blue shirt, sometimes it depends on the fabric. Your white isn't going to be as um, vibrant the first time around. You might have to do it twice. Um, so I'm gonna see, cause sometimes I like that for like a vintage look, but we're not going for a vintage look this time. So I'm just going to, actually I still have more up here. We're just gonna dip into our paste and grab a little more you guys if you're hopping on say hey my name is melissa we are inking a patriotic shirt tonight and i'm just showing you how super easy it is it's so easy you guys my daughter is five she's been doing this for two years with me she is a professional too and the cool thing is that kids get to see their projects and they get to see like how professional look looking it is and they're like amazed by it so we're almost done. So we're just going to go across this last little area. And you can kind of tell by looking through the silk screen how saturated it is, but not fully. You're gonna not really fully see it until you lift it up. But if you see some areas that look like they need a little more saturation, <laughs> just go ahead and cover those areas up. So sometimes when it's a darker shirt, hi, Kathy, how are you? Sometimes when it's a darker shirt, the lighter colors take a little bit more to show. So sometimes I might put it on a little bit thicker, but we usually take, for the most part, the extra off. And I do want to tell you 
that when you are peeling your stencil up for inking, you want to peel slowly just in case you miss a small area. It's going to be much easier to lay it back down in place um, if you haven't completely peeled it all the way up. So I'm just doing a second layer just to make sure we get it a little bit more saturated um, because this is white on a dark shirt. I think this is going to be super cute. What do you guys think? What do you guys... Um, am I the only person who's like so excited for 4th of July that I had to make shirts for my whole family? Like, does anybody else actually like get dressed up and patriotic for the 4th of July or is that just me? Crazy me. All right, I've got everything covered. I did it about two times. So I'm just taking my extra off and I think I'm happy with how things are looking. So we're gonna go ahead and peel it back and see how it came out. You do too, Shannon? Okay, I'm like, I've been making a lot of shirts. I wonder if people think I'm like crazy. I make so many patriotic shirts. All right, so here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna just grab one corner and then we're gonna grab the other corner and we're gonna move all the way to the middle so that we're not pulling from the corners, if you get what I'm saying. You wanna pull left to right or right to left. So here's another reason the ink mat is perfect because the ink mat is really sticky and it's holding my shirt down so it's not gonna peel up as much as it would if it was on like a piece of cardboard. Thank you, Kathy. So we're gonna peel this up. Oh, I'm thinking, I think we're gonna leave it as it is. I like the white, I think it looks good. So I'm going slowly, because remember I said, if you happen to see a spot that you don't think has enough ink, it's much easier to lay it back down like that than it is um, after you've completely peeled it up. But this is looking great, and I'm trying not to touch the ink with my hands. I think this looks awesome, and I had zero bleeding. Okay, I'm gonna throw this in my water, sticky side up so that the sticky side is floating. This is super, yeah, it's super easy to do, right? Okay, my I got my stencil stuck to itself. Hold on one second there. One second. Okay. Let me just make a video of like things not to do. <laughs> I'm just gonna grab a paper towel and dry off my hands and then I'll hold it up for you guys to see. I think he's gonna like it like this. We were thinking if the white didn't show up, we might add some red on top of it and kind of make a shadow effect, but I really, really like this. So let me hold it up for you guys. This came out great. So there you have it, I pledge allegiance. Doesn't this look awesome? So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna let this dry overnight. I usually keep mine on the ink mat because if I pull it off, I tend to like fold it over on itself and then I get the ink on itself in like the wrong spot. But look at this, there's not even any bleeding, you guys. This looks amazing. And then tomorrow, or whenever I get to it really, I'm going to heat set it. And there's a couple different ways to heat set it. I'm just gonna throw this in my water. You can heat set it with an iron. All you do is you put Hey, Cindy, how are you, girl? All you do, you've never seen the shadow effect. I, I was going to be cool, but I think this looks really good the way it is. I don't want to change it. Um, so what was I saying? So when you want to heat set it, you can use an iron. You're going to put a piece of parchment paper down. You're going to iron it for like four minutes, and then you'll flip it inside out and do the same. Or you can do what I do. I have a heat press. I put it at 315 for 30 seconds. I put the parchment paper down, drop that down for 30 seconds, flip it over and do the same thing and you're good to go. So we're going to leave this like it is because I think it came out amazing. So how many, how long did that take guys? Like five minutes, not even. So we've got, I had a plan B in case I did finish this and liked it like this. So I'm going to go ahead and pop this aside and then we're going to do one more ink project. And you guys are going to be kind of surprised by this one if you've been watching me for a while. Okay, Isabella's upstairs, Dad. Isabella is my five-year-old. Okay, so this is something that I've seen somebody do a while ago. You could do this with chalk, but I'm gonna do it with ink. This is a um, cork board notebook. It's just like blank pages. 
that uh, you, I got this, I believe I got this at the dollar store a while ago though, like months ago. I'm not sure if it would still be there, but you can actually heat set on cork board. So rather than using chalk paste, because if I put chalk paste on this, I'm going to have to worry about if I, it gets wet. I'm going to make this for my daughter to draw pictures in. So I'm going to use ink so that I can heat set it so that it doesn't get messed up because let me show you the stencil we're going to use. What I'm going to do is I'm making this for my daughter to be kind of like a summer journal so she can draw her pictures of like things she did on vacation. So, you know, it's blank pages. She can draw pictures of herself at the beach or, you know, doing her cheerleading practice, whatever she wants to draw. And it's something cool that we can kind of hold on to. So this is the stencil we're going to use on the front. So you can see we're obviously going to the beach, so I don't want it to get wet ever if I use chalk paste. Thank you, Teresa. So we're going to go ahead and use this one and we're going to ink it. So I'm trying to decide, do I want to ink this in black? Do I want to ink it in white? I don't think a color would look really that great. So I think either black or white. I'm kind of leaning towards black. What do you guys think? I'm thinking I'm leaning towards black. So what's going to be the color is whatever is white on this. So anything that's green is going to be the cork board color. So I, I can either do the white or the black. This is white. That's gray. What do you guys think? Throw me some hearts if you think white. Throw me some wow faces if you think black. Throw me some hearts just to help get my video out there. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much, Connie. So Teresa says black, Brenda says black. Okay, so it sounds like black is going to be the winner. So this is our, it's called coal black. So like I said, this is ink, not chalk, and I'm using ink because this is cork board and I can heat set it. And that way, if she gets it wet, it's not going to be an issue as far as the design coming off. I'm super excited about this one. So here we go. We're going to do it. So we're going to do two ink projects tonight. So that shirt came out awesome. Did you guys like how that shirt came out? Thank you, Donna. All right. So this is probably a good one to show you guys. Wait till you see the detail. Do you see the, um, the earth? I was like the planet, the earth. Wait till you see how that comes out. Like those details are really incredible to get without having to do any weeding or anything. This is going to be awesome. So I don't, I've never used cork board. Um, so I don't know if I should fuzz or not, but by putting it down, I'm feeling it's not sticking too much to it. I'm going to fuzz this once just in case, because this is a brand new stencil. So it's super, super sticky. Thank you so much, Cheryl. So what fuzzing is, is thank you for sprinkling Shannon. Basically I'm going to, I'm using my tacky towel and basically I'm going to just put a little lint on the back. It takes some of the adhesive off. Oh my God, before we do this, I well, we'll do it next, I guess. I didn't clean my stencil. It takes some of the adhesive off the back, um, makes it a little less fuzzy. It doesn't take the adhesive off, but it makes it less sticky. And then we wash the adhesive off when we're done. So I'm gonna go ahead and lay this on. I can't believe I forgot to clean my stencil. <laughs> and I'm gonna try to center it as best as I can. You guys, I have like the biggest OCD, so. Let's see if we can center this and make this straight and not crooked. All right, so we've got it down. Um, not currently, Brenda, we do not. We cannot make our own stencils. What I love about this is it's like pre-designed, it's easy and it's easy and ready to go. Okay, so here's what I do to get rid of my air bubbles on harder surfaces. I have, we have this angled squeegee that's thicker, it's stronger. All I do is I take it and I apply a little bit of pressure. And then if you hear any popping sounds, barely any, but we heard a couple, those were air bubbles. So that's how we get rid of those air bubbles to make sure that we have all the fine details without any bleeding. And then we're gonna go ahead and ink this and we're gonna do the same thing with this too. We're gonna let it dry overnight and then I'll heat press it tomorrow. So ready? This is gonna be super quick. So I'm gonna grab my, my squeegee, I almost said my stencil. Grab my squeegee, dip it into my ink, and we're just gonna spread it over the stencil. I'm not really, I'm not applying pressure on this surface 
because it's not fabric. Um, but I did apply a little pressure on the other, on the shirt. And then you're gonna take off your extra. So I'm gonna do my best not to go off of my stencil. But with this surface, I think I could easily get the ink off if I accidentally um, hit the cork board. I'm just trying to get this, like these little areas that are so close to the edge there. Okay, so I have the whole thing covered. So now we're just gonna take that extra off. That's how easy this is, you guys. Yes, you wash the fuzz off. I'm like, it's not taking the adhesive off. I don't know. All right, so now we're gonna do the same thing. When I peel this up, I wanna do it slowly, just in case I don't think I have anything covered, um, in case I see nothing. You know what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying, right? All right, let's go ahead and peel this one off, and I'll do it so that you guys can see it as I'm peeling it. Okay, are we ready? Throw me some hearts and I will peel it for you. I wanna see hearts. I wanna see some hearts. <laughs> Let me just check if I missed anything, no. Okay, here we go. Are you guys ready? Let's peel this baby off. Look at this. So I'm doing it slowly obviously, because I want to make sure I have everything. And I'm also trying to look into the camera at the same time. I'm going to just stick this here for a sec. And let me hold this. This came out so cute. So cute. No bleeding, you guys. So look at the earth again. That was where I really wanted you to focus on um, to see that detail. Isn't that awesome? Oh my God. Maybe I can do something on the back of this too another time. But I love how this came out. She is going to flip. She's going to love this. So now real quick, we're going to put that aside. And I'm going to show you guys how to clean our stencils so that you can reuse them. So let me just close up my piece. Thank you so much for all the love, you guys. I truly appreciate that. If you are new, make sure you follow me. I go live a lot um, to show you guys how to use these products all different kinds of ways. So let me show you now how to make this product, how to clean it. My stencil got stuck to itself. How to clean it so you can reuse it again. So I just, thank you so much, you guys. So I just threw my stencil in some water. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab my stencil cleaner. It's basically a magic eraser and it just doesn't have like the soap in it. Isn't it awesome? I love how it came out. And I'm pretty sure I got that at the dollar store. So we're just gonna take this and we're just gonna rub the ink. Oh, we gotta flip it over first. We're just gonna rub the ink off of the stencil. Sometimes it will stain, ink usually does, but as long as your silk screen is not clogged, excuse me, um, you're good to use it over and over again. So I'm just wiping off the ink basically. We're gonna squeeze that out and we're gonna do the same thing with our um, Summer Memories one while I have it out. The longer you wait to throw it in the water, the harder it's going to be to get off. So you wanna get it in there as soon as you can. But you don't wanna leave it in the water a long time. Let me specify that. All right, so we're just wiping the ink off of that summer memories one wait till you guys see how sticky this stuff is all right it's already sticking to my shirt and it's soaking wet now we're gonna just wing that out we're going to take thank you so much we're gonna take our stencil eraser again or cleaner and we're just gonna wipe over the back of it and that's gonna get off gently uh, uh, we're, that's gonna get off any of that fuzzing that we had on there it's sticking to me so much that like it's it's hard to do this same thing with this one and if you missed any ink or anything it will get that as well so we're just going to wipe off just brush over it really to get any of that fuzz off from the t-shirt then i got a little bit of ink on my backer sheet here so let me get another paper towel then we're going to grab a clean paper towel and we're just going to dry off 
the back of our stencil. And look at this, you guys. So sticky. And look at the, the silk screen right there. You can see right through it. This is going to be good to be used over and over again, 10 to 15 times. But I can tell you that I have some that I have used well over that. I've been doing this for two years. And as long as you take care of your stuff really well, um, it's going to last you a long time. And even if, say, it wasn't sticky anymore, your silk screen is still good to use. So you could always use a repo repositionable adhesive spray or... Um... So you're going to see that there is a little bit of staining on here. But my silk screen is clear. Even though it's stained, it's not clogged. So... You do see there is a little staining, but it is not clogged. And same with this, super clean. We're gonna be able to use this over and over again. So we're gonna throw this back on its backer sheet. I forgot, this was like my favorite thing to do. This is how sticky it is, again, and it just, it's actually still wet. Did I even dry this one? I don't even think I dried this one yet. So we'll dry this off with a paper towel, and yeah, because now it feels even more sticky. I do want to show you something, you guys. I made a mistake. When I threw this in the water, I it got stuck together, and I didn't pull it apart right away. That is very important to do, because you can see that right here, where it got stuck together, it pulled some of the, um, does the I don't know what that is, the mylar off of it. So it's okay, because that's not going to mess up my design, but that's something you want to make sure you're very careful of. So let me grab my backer sheet for that one and I will hold up that shirt again. Now I have like the worst OCD. I always want these things to go on and be like perfectly straight. So usually I lay my stencil down and put my backer sheet on top of it because the stencil is, you know, flimsy and will move around. And then once you have it on, you want to make sure that it's nice and flat when you store it. You don't want it to be stored wrinkly. You don't want that what I just showed you to happen, and that will happen if it's wrinkled and up too. And so, there you have it, back on its backer sheet. Then we're just gonna put it in, put them back in their bags, and they'll be good to use over and over again. So let me show you guys again the first project that we did. We did a shirt. We inked a T-shirt. This one is for my husband. And it is, I'm afraid to put it up there because it's all wet up there now. But the Pledge of Allegiance. So this one came out awesome. I love, I love how bright the white actually came out. And there's no bleeding. And it looks great. And then the second project, so I'm going to heat set this tomorrow. Um, and then it will be permanent. You can wash it over and over again. It's not going to fade. It's not going to peel like vinyl does. It's going to look amazing until that shirt doesn't look amazing anymore. Welcome back, Kathy. Hope, hopefully it's working for you now. And then the second project we did was this. I also used ink for this because this is corkboard. So you want to be careful because this takes a long time to dry. So don't touch it if it's ink and it's still wet. But look at the detail. Um, I'm obsessed with the starfish and the... The little piece of earth there and the details that came out of it I always look like a creep like sneaking around my project so they came out great right um, one little trick I can show you guys when it does come to staining sometimes if you hit it with a disinfectant wipe you're able to get it off not always um, but sometimes it helps and then I'm, I'm actually gonna have to take this off of the backer sheet because now my backer sheet's all wet but just a little trick but like I said this staining is not going to be an issue I can use this over and over again because the silk screen itself is not clogged so I hope you enjoyed everything that we did today please follow me like my page and make sure you come back to see what other amazing projects I have in store um, one real quick thing I wanted to mention is I am going to start making a shop where I can sell my finished pieces so this is one of them that's going to go up. Um, so this one is actually burnt into the wood. So I'm going to be selling this. I'm going to be selling other little signs I made. This one is super cute. It says, don't go bake in my heart. 
I have a bunch of cute little signs that I'm going to put up. So keep an eye out for that. And if you're interested in anything, make sure you snatch it up before somebody else does. I'll hang that up after, I guess. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a fantastic night.